uh, we'll talk about the epidemiology of specific fungal outbreaks in hospital setting. There are three important uh, fun fungal infections that can cause outbreaks in the hospital. These include candida that usually cause non-invasive or invasive candidiasis, candida auris, aspergilla species. We'll start with the candida, the regular candida that can cause nosocomial and invasive candidiasis. Uh, the most uh, common type of this uh, candida is candida albicans, but also there is other types like uh, including candida tropicalis uh, glabarta, uh, crozi, and others. Uh, for the epidemiology, we should know that candida normally lives on the skin and inside of the body. Uh, such as mouth, uh, throat, gut, vagina, without causing any problem. So candida is one of the commensals in the body. Uh, but it can cause infection if it grows out of control and penetrate the mucosa or enter the blood. Uh, in recent years, the frequency of nosocomial candidiasis is getting uh, uh, bigger. Uh, and this is probably due to newer diagnostic and therapeutic techniques. Uh, candidiasis can be invasive, meaning enter uh, the blood uh, or uh, organs, uh, especially among high-risk patients. Invasive candidiasis is a severe disease and can be associated with uh, hospital cost and mortality uh, up to 30%. Uh, at risk patients for getting uh, candidiasis, especially invasive candidiasis, a critical illness with prolonged intensive care stay, presence of central line catheter, use of broad spectrum antimicrobial or total parenteral nutrition, having uh, immunocompromised status, especially solid organ uh, malignancy, stem cell transplant transplantation, neutropenia or recent abdominal uh, surgery, a uh, preterm infants with low birth weight, renal failure or hemodialysis, injection drug users. Uh, hospital outbreaks are known for ca uh, invasive candidiasis in special units uh, that include usually uh, high risk patients. These include oncology, hematology unit, hemobiotic stem cell transplant unit, uh, solid organ transplant unit, neonatal ICU, burners RCU. Uh, the symptoms of candidiasis can be uh, very uh, mild, like uh, thrush, which is a candida infection of the mouth and throat, or candida infection of uh, vagina, and this is not invasive candidiasis and lo uh, considered as localized mild infection. However, what is uh, important here is the invasive candidiasis, which is a serious infection that can affect uh, the blood uh, and body organs, including the heart, brain, eyes, bones, or other body parts. Uh, if, it, if it affected the blood, it caused candidemia or bloodstream infection, and this is one of the most common invasive candidiasis. Uh, Sign and symptoms of invasive candidiasis are non-specific and depends on the location. So if it affected the blood uh, and it caused uh, bloodstream infection, this would... Uh, manifested by fever, shells, and hypotension that is not responded to antimicrobial, antibacterial, uh, or antibiotics, antibacterial treatments or antibiotics. Uh, however, the symptoms will be differ according to the body sites. As we said, it can cause uh, multiple infection at uh, different body sites, including endocarditis, peritonitis, meningitis, osteomyelitis, arthritis, and uh, endophthalmitis. And this, uh, this figure shows that in, it can affect uh, almost all body organs, including uh, the kidney, the liver, the eye, the lung, the bone. And uh, uh, so uh, it can cause multiple types of infection. Uh, the major part is, of course, the blood infection, which is, uh, it's, uh, which is called uh, candidemia. For invasive candidiasis, uh, the specimen should be obtained from sterile body sites, 
uh, the stride body sites will depends on the type of infection so if it is uh, candidemia you can get blood for meningitis you can get csf uh, for peritonitis you can get peritoneal fluid for uh, pleurisy and lung infection uh, you get uh, pleural fluid and so on uh, there is a uh, presumptive lab evidence uh, of presence of uh, invasive candidemia and these are uh, tested that detect the antigen or antibody in the serum uh, like manan test anti manan antibody candida albicans germ tube antibody bd glucan test uh, a confirmatory test will depends on culture of uh, blood and other uh, sterile body sites uh, or pcr testing uh, the mode of transmission of candida is a little different from other infection it is mainly endogenous as we said um, uh, it is uh, one of the uh, flora of the uh, mouth gut uh, vagina so what happened is when uh, immunity is disrupted uh, and risk factor is present it can cross the mucosa and cause invasive uh, candidiasis uh, less commonly candida can be transmitted uh, from contaminated hands of healthcare workers or contaminated medical devices uh, to other patients the incubation period varied from patient to patient. Uh, invasive candidiasis is not infective to other people. So people who have uh, uh, invasive candidiasis or candidemia are not uh, inf infective for other uh, patients. Uh, some candida species live in the skin, as we said, uh, and it is uh, considered commensal and possibly can be transmitted to other patients through patient-to-patient -patient contact or uh, healthcare worker uh, hands. Uh, for prevention and control in healthcare setting, it is the measures uh, of uh, contact uh, transmission, uh, including adhering to hand hygiene uh, recommendation, contact isolation, uh, follow recommendation uh, of appropriate placement and maintenance of central line and practicing antimicrobial stewardship because antibiotics uh, 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 inappropriate use of antimicrobial can cause flare up of candidal uh, infection some group of patients may benefit from antifungal prophylaxis these include high risk patients with immunocompromised status such as solid organ or transplant uh, solid organ transplant uh, uh, recipients, high risk ICU patients, patients with chemotherapy induced neutropenia, stem cell transplant recipients with neutropenia. Additionally, setting a surveillance system for invasive candidiasis, a track in incidence of candidemia and mon monitor lab and epidemiologic trends of uh, increased positive blood culture for candida, uh, identify new risk factors for candida, candidemia, by making local studies, detected changes in resistant and to antifungal agents, um, and monitor this over time. Uh, when to discontinue contact isolation uh, for uh, can, uh, can, uh, candidiasis? Uh, this should be after two negative culture uh, from previously positive uh, site uh, one week apart. Uh, there is no vaccine for uh, candida. Uh, the next type of candida is candida auris, and it's very important uh, and can cause serious uh, problem, serious outbreaks in healthcare setting. Uh, candida auris is an emerging uh, fungal infection that uh, uh, is considered a serious global health problem, especially at healthcare setting. Why? Because it is uh, uh, becoming more common. Uh, and it is uh, multi-drug resistant to several anti-fungal uh, drugs and currently there is only uh, three groups that are considered uh, uh, suitable for treating severe candida auris infection into including uh, azoles and echinocandines and amphotericin B. Uh, additionally, it is difficult to identify using the standard lab method and require special lab setting and testing and it can cause a severe hospital outbreak difficult to end. 
And this slide summarizes why Candida auris uh, is considered a healthcare a problem, uh, similar to what we said. It causes serious infection. It's often resistant to medicine. It's become more common. It's difficult to identify uh, using standard lab methods, and it can spread in hospitals and nursing homes. These are the risk factors for Candida auris. It includes a prolonged hospital or ICU stay, uh, patients with uh, positive carbapenem resistant enterobacteria, uh, uh, either with infection or colonization, current or active outbreak in healthcare facility, and higher rate of uh, Candida auris in some facilities. Uh, the presence of indwelling devices, including central line urinary catheter, ventilator, biliary uh, catheter, wound drain, and so on. Uh, an impaired immune system, so all Im immunocompromised patients, hemodialysis uh, patients, oncology patients are susceptible to candida auris. Uh, prolonged use or misuse of broad spectrum antimicrobials, including antibiotics, antibacterials, and antifungals. Uh, patients in critical care areas like ICU, adult pediatric, and neonatal dialysis uh, uh, area. A hospital outbreak has been reported in different countries, and the symptoms uh, and clinical picture will depend uh, on the body sites affected. Uh, the major infection caused by Candida auris include bloodstream infection that would be uh, presented by shells, fever, hypotension, wound infection, uh, redness, uh, swelling, ear infection, secretion, fever, and so on. Uh, Candida auris can be detected also in the uh, sputum uh, and urine specimen. However, uh, most of scientists consider Candida auris is, is, uh, is colonizer for urine and, uh, and lung uh, secretions, so they don't consider these as infection. Um, for a screening for uh, Candida auris, it should be noted that Candida auris is present in many body sites, including the mouth, nose, ears, uh, external ears, uh, urine, wound, uh, rectum, axilla, and groin. The most sensitive site is axilla and groin, so they decided to make uh, a composite swab of both axilla and groin to be a uh, screening for uh, Candida auris. We do a screening uh, for patients in special units um, and, uh, and hospitals that have previous outbreak, current outbreak, high rates of Candida auris or long-term care facility. We do not do a screening for healthcare workers unless they are the identified source for uh, transmission of infection, um, and this usually done by agreement with the IBC staff. Uh, for the case definition of Candida auris, we have two groups, suspected and confirmed. For the suspected, any uh, patient uh, with a lab result saying he has non-candida albicans. Candida albicans is the most common type of candida. So, so if the patient have non-candida albicans, assume that this is uh, candida or so it's a suspected case. From confirmed case, you have to have a lab uh, confirmatory test uh, result. Um, irrespective of the specimen was invasive clinical specimen like blood and cerebrospinal fluid or non-invasive like uh, urine wound or respiratory system, um, or uh, screening specimen, and these uh, uh, the most important is the both axilla, groin, but other sites as well like uh, nerves, rectum, uh, mouth, uh, ear canals, and so on. Uh, for the diagnosis, there is two groups of tests: uh, presumptive lab test and confirmatory lab test. For the presumptive lab test, the problem is most of the machines used. Uh, are misdiagnosing uh, the Candida auris, and this is uh, in Vitek and uh, Microscan and BD Phonics yeast identification system and other. Uh, and usually um, uh, it is misidentified uh, as Candida uh, homoleuni. And uh, there is some lab tests that can a little bit differentiate between 
the candida or other um, or other types of uh, candida uh, by growing candida in a special media like chrome agar. But there is confirmatory test, and this confirmatory test depends on culturing candida oris from body fluids and blood uh, or having a positive uh, candida or a sp specific uh, BCR. Mode of transmission, uh, candida oris is mainly uh, uh, transmitted uh, through uh, uh, indirect contact, uh, through touching a contaminated surface, surfaces and using contaminated common use uh, medical equipments uh, in healthcare facilities. However, there is also possibility of person to person uh, spread, especially the candida auris uh, can be present on the skin uh, and shed uh, to the environment and uh, other patients. Uh, incubation period is uh, not well known and probably it's different from patient to patient. Uh, and uh, the patient is considered infective uh, even if it is colonized and perhaps indefinitely so uh, once uh, positive uh, candida oris so you should consider the patient um, infective this is a graph that show that candida oris is contaminating surfaces uh, patients skin uh, healthcare worker hands, medical devices, and so on. So it is uh, a major challenge in healthcare setting that need a very effective cleaning to eradicate the organism. Uh, for prevention and control, it is early screening, screening, early detection, and uh, especially in high-risk patients and colonized uh, patients. Emphasize the adherence to hand hygiene, major important the hand hygiene, and limiting the number of people who work uh, with the patients who have candida oris. This is called cohorting of healthcare uh, workers and implement uh, strict contact precautions, uh, including uh, keeping the patient in single room. Uh, if single room is limited, you can cohort a patient with positive candida or is not other uh, MDROs. Uh, healthcare workers wear uh, gowns, gloves during patient care, practicing regular and appropriate hand hygiene, cleaning and disinfection of patient care environment on a daily basis and according to recommendation, communicating with other fa facilities, uh, the uh, information of the patient uh, in case of transfer. For the environmental cleaning, we have detailed information here. Uh, Candida oris is very resistant to uh, cleaning with regular disinfectants and can persist on surfaces uh, for a long time and uh, is considered uh, the major source of indirect uh, contact. Uh, the regular quaternary ammonium uh, antiseptics used in hospitals uh, are not effective against uh, candida auris. So you have to educate, educate environmental cleaning staff and implement uh, supervised cleaning. Uh, so you can use ultraviolet light, uh, but this needs to be uh, for longer cycle to be able to eradicate uh, candida auris. Uh, we recommend using hospital approved disinfectant effective against cholesterol difficile spores. So the disinfectant that is uh, effective against cholesterol difficile will be effective against uh, candida oris. If not available, uh, use uh, sodium hypochlorite uh, solution, 1 to 50 in house uh, for general cleaning and 1 to 10 for terminal cleaning. And uh, you can use uh, diluted 1, 1 to 50 uh, for cleaning and disinfection of other uh, areas outside the patient rooms, including uh, radiology and physiotherapy. Follow recommendation for contact time. So the sodium hypochlorite should be, for example, kept for uh, 10 minutes. Housekeepers should perform environmental cleaning while wearing appropriate uh, personal protective equipment, including disposable gloves and gowns. Uh, use the designated cleaning equipment uh, area 
and actually you need to dispose cleaning material in the isolation uh, used in isolation room or unit. Uh, clean and disinfect, and disinfect equipment and furniture upon patient discharge. The need of environmental screening uh, would be performed after consultation of infection control uh, staff, and there is no vaccine uh, for Candida auris. Uh, the last fungal infection that we'll study today is Aspergillus species. Um, uh, there is multiple Aspergillus species. The most common is Aspergillus uh, fumigatus, Aspergillus flavus, and less common species including Aspergillus uh, teras, uh, nedulans, nigar, and versicolor. Uh, it can cause nosocomial aspergillosis, which represent a serious infection and threat to severely uh, immunocompromised patients. High risk group, including patients with immunocompromised status, especially under those who are undergoing hemobiotic stem transplant, solid organ transplant, major surgery, including gastrointestinal surgery, severe burn, uh, those with neutropenia due to chemotherapy or cancer, AIDS, um, neoplastic uh, disease, immunosuppressive uh, therapy, advanced age, or premature babies. Uh, hospital outbreak uh, have been reported among uh, immunocompromised patients, especially in uh, specific units, including oncology, hematology unit, hemobiotic stem transplant unit, solid organ transplant unit, neonatal ICU, Burns ICU. Um, uh, remember that the source of aspergillus species uh, are construction work, renovation activities, and contaminated or defective air supply system. So construction and air supply are, are the major uh, cause of uh, aspergillus spores that can cause uh, lung infection or severe aspergillosis. Uh, so construction work and uh, defective air supply is the major source of aspergillus uh, outbreaks. Uh, symptoms and clinical picture of aspergillosis will depend on uh, the site affected. Uh, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis uh, in patients who have uh, congenital cystic fibrosis or asthma, uh, it is manifested by uh, coughing, shortness of breath, and wheezing. Uh, on the other hand, allergic aspergillus sinusitis uh, is manifested as running nose, a stuffness, a headache, reduced ability to smell. Uh, chronic pulmonary aspergillosis in patients with other chronic-like disease can cause weight loss, uh, very common cough uh, and uh, hemoptysis, fatigue, uh, shortness of, uh, of breath. Uh, invasive aspergillosis in immunocompromised patients is a serious disease, most commonly affect uh, the lung, but can spread to other body sites and cause fever, chest pain, cough, hemoptysis, and shortness of breath. Uh, cutaneous aspergillosis can also uh, occur in, in, if invasive aspergillosis is spread uh, to the skin for somewhere else in the body, from somewhere else of the body. It's like uh, in inoculating the skin. Uh, this uh, graph, as you see, uh, the aspergillus spores uh, is uh, carried uh, from the sources, which is construction and defective air conditioning uh, through the air inhaled by the patient and uh, cause uh, the, the clinical picture that we described in the last slide. Diagnosis uh, using microscopy, you can uh, see uh, the characteristic for aspergillus uh, uh, organism. Uh, there is other tests that can detect aspergillosis, including galactamine antigen test in the plasma, serum, bronchoalveolar lavage, or CSF. Uh, aspergillus PCR, another test. Aspergillus species recovered by culture in certain uh, fluid, including sputum, bal, uh, bronchoalveolar uh, lavage, uh, bronchial brush, or aspirate. Mode of transmission is inhalation of aspergillus spores, as we show 
you in the uh, last few slides. Uh, interestingly, aspergillosis cannot be spread from patient to patient. So the source would be construction and defective air system. Incubation period unclear, but uh, invasive aspergillosis can uh, have incubation period for 15 uh, after 15 days of from exposure. Uh, infectivity as long as the source of aspergillus spores is present, as we said, construction and effective air supply, uh, then infectivity continue. But as we said, it's not transmitted from patient to patient. Prevention and control will be directed toward the source. So protect patients, especially high risk patients from the sources of aspergillosis, uh, aspergillus spores. Uh, so uh, seal off patient area uh, with impermeable barrier and keep doors and windows closed, especially if you have uh, any reconstruction events in the hospital and avoid non-emergent admission uh, during heavy construction uh, events. Uh, if possible, uh, you can relocate patients to an area far from the reconstruction uh, process uh, and verify that the air conditioning uh, and HEPA filtering, uh, HEPA filter is uh, working fine uh, and the amount of exchange air is maintained. Uh, uh, you need also to treat uh, the patients. When you transport the patient, make sure to use alternative uh, routes to avoid dust from construction uh, area and uh, clean the patient area in high risk uh, groups using wet cleaning to avoid dust and continue surveillance for invasive candidiasis and also screening to detect uh, to early detect uh, cases. Uh, again, at other uh, fungi, there is no uh, vaccine for Aspergillus species. Thank you very much.